Alright, Oval fans, this is my review for episode 21, The Godfather. And yes, I'm doing my episode review the day after instead of like four days later. Look, I'm going home tomorrow morning for the 4th of July weekend. I need to get this stuff out quickly so I can take a much well-deserved and needed vacation. So, um, 8.5 out of 10. I thought this was a pretty solid episode, to be completely honest. Uh, I think the cat, um, excuse me, I think uh, Tyler is doing a good job with these recent episodes by making the episode move at a decent enough pace so characters really aren't annoying and once again we have a burialist episode so yeah let's hop right into it so kyle stepped out of the shadows it turns out he was the one who shot yuma and he drags her around and you know pretty much you know uh chastises her is like see you see you just stuck your nose in where it didn't belong turns out he was actually listening in on uh, Max and Yuma's discussion, or oh, actually, no, 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 he said, I saw you two when you left the uh, residency and everything, so he pretty much knew from the start that he would be um, ambushing her at the boutique. So, long story short, Yuma's trying to say, like, hey, uh, everybody knows where I am, and, like, call for help, Kyle isn't having it, and I'm like, this sick bastard, you can't help but kind of love the guy because he gives the show a much-needed boost of energy when it could be a dull storyline. And you're just waiting for Kyle to get his, which could potentially be next week, but we'll have to wait and find out. So he pretty much ends up tying her up and gagging her. And I guess you could say, what was it called? Is it seal the wound so she doesn't bleed out completely and die? Because apparently she's going to be used as bait to get Max down there. But we have Gail contacting Brian Winters and uh for family emancipation and as an attorney there is the attorney client privilege so basically until until gail signs the document hiring him the privilege isn't there so thankfully she signed the document and then started to spill her guts and then he asked for permission to record everything and she said fine but the problem is, and I know some people are like, you know, all oh, attorneys like Brian Winters are probably sleazy and whatnot. To be fair, Gail did not read a damn thing. She signed it, e-signature, and sent it back within five seconds, which meant that she probably didn't even read five words on the document. So even if it turns out Brian Winters had that contract all set up, which could have loopholes in it where he could expose everything. It doesn't matter because Gail did not read it. So whatever happens at this point is completely on Gail. So uh, she pretty much starts airing out and exposing the family dirty laundry from the abuse she suffered from the violence uh, between both her parents and this and that. It's just nonstop. And she lets it all. Basically, she's telling brian everything we've seen on screen uh we go over to kareem when he comes back to the pharmacy with lunch sam comes in to talk with him long story short we know where this conversation was going um sam pretty much arranges like hey i mean i'm a powerful dude and you might need somebody like me in your corner now i'm not trying to strong arm you but if you drop the charges you'll get a favor with somebody like me now I know a lot of people are speculating i know chandler melrose and several other people i've talked to um, we're saying like, hey, they might have it where Sam's probably going to be like, hey, Kareem, I know you're doing dirty behind this pharmacy. So if you don't want me to ruin your operation, then why don't you drop the charges against Barry? But no, uh, he was literally like, hey, man, man to man, if you drop the charges, you'll have a favor in your pocket, which honestly I thought was a pretty interesting twist there. Now, because Kareem stepped down, that could mean Sam might look into Kareem's past and find something Kareem didn't want him to know leading to him being exposed if he's doing illegal activity and using a pharmacy as a front. So let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Even if Kareem is doing foul, I think he has every right to not want to drop the charges. And I'm not saying this is a Barry hater. I'm not saying this is a Kareem fan. This has nothing to do with him trying to feel up on Sharon. Sharon made her own choices. All I'm saying is, if somebody drove a vehicle through the pharmacy entrance and thank goodness it was probably the debris in, in the counter that prevented the truck from going even further, because as Kareem told Sharon, like in the last episode or whatever, or a couple episodes ago, do you think he really would have killed us? Because 
I'm just saying. I I mean, Sam and you know, or just and like Richard are trying to defend him, like you know, hey, uh, he's a good kid and everything. I'm like, I know everyone has their moments of rage. I think on the Boondocks they call it the N-word moment. You know what I mean? But at the same time, Kareem has every right to press charges. I, and I would have said, okay, well, fine. If I drop the charges and you know, um, I have you as a favor. Who's going to pay for this? Because I think he told uh, Sharon last week that the only way insurance would cover the damages is if Kareem pressed charges against a person who did this. So, yeah, I understand. Let me put it this way. I pretty much would think that taking the favor would have been the smarter thing to prevent Sam from potentially finding something to blackmail against Kareem. But again, I completely understand where he's coming from by not wanting to drop the charges. And that's all I got to say about that. Uh, so then Nancy and Richard, uh, I think he said he was coming from the bathroom. Nancy's nagging him about walking around. But to be honest, I understand it because, uh, you know, he literally just went through a lot getting shot. And seeing Richard, the butler, refusing to be waited on when he's so used to helping other people, it reminds me of all the times like the, uh, Batman media, whether it be the comic books or the animated series or whatnot, whenever something happens to Alfred and somebody tries to serve him tea or whatever, he flips out on him because he's usually the one to do it. That's what it reminded me of. Um, Sam shows up and tells him about the situation that Barry... Um, he didn't stab Ruth. That wasn't the body. It was animal blood on the knife. And, you know, Nancy's like, oh, thank goodness. And I'm like, Nancy, you're the one who's been thinking the worst about your son the entire time. Sit down. Uh, but in any case, turns out Barry has bail. Uh, remember, I do believe Sam doesn't know that Barry said the money was his and then used that to get bail, which, oh my God, that was so stupid. But in any case, Nancy is finding out that oh wait oh wait you're trying to shift the blame of the shooting on a dead man and then she finds out finds out that picky's dead her nephew is dead my sister's son is dead and yeah that's a lot okay let me put it this way she isn't happy about sam and richard willing to shift the blame of the shooting on to picky instead of barry actually fest uh you know facing crimes for what he did thankfully richard said something that should have been said episodes ago Barry was holding a gun, but we were both fighting over it. So if Barry goes down, I'm probably just as guilty because I was, you know, wrestling with him with over the gun. And I'm like, that is absolutely correct. I still think it's bull crap that they're the ones who shot the man because the bullet allegedly went right. Because, yeah, Richard said there was a hole right through the door, meaning that the bullet had to not only penetrate through the car door, but somehow go through the window at a weird angle in order to hit that man in his sleep. I don't think Barry and Richard were the ones that shot that man. I forgot his name, but I know he was a deacon at the church and pretty much, you know, a pillar of the community. And that's why they were protesting everything. So I still don't think Barry and Richard were the ones that shot that man. But yes, regardless of whether or not they shot the man, Barry and Richard were fighting over the gun. And remember, Barry was crying in the driver's seat. Richard parked behind him and got in the car. And he was the one that tried to wrestle the gun away. It's kind of like, you know, uh, when Kareem took the gun out, on Barry when they were fighting in the pharmacy and while they were fighting Barry was reaching for the gun you know but at the same time Kareem was the one holding the gun when it went off a few times so yeah either way if Barry did go down I could see Richard possibly going down as well so let me put it this way I am not going to I know why people are upset at Nancy but I honestly I kind of get it because it's like if yeah, how could you let your son knowingly get away with a murder and not only that desecrate your nephew, your dead nephew's memory by shifting the blame of a murder on him, throwing his name in the dirt when he's about to be buried in dirt. So believe it or not, I think Nancy is justified in being upset. Yes, I actually, I never thought I'd say it, but yes, I do think Nancy's justified in being upset. So, um, we go over to Victoria and uh, a maid saying, hey, don't, in, don't let anybody go in the bedroom. Oh, we know how that turns out later. Uh, we go over to two new characters. I believe it's uh, Ellie, who is the acting press secretary, and Diane, who is the press secretary. Uh, Brian calls for Gail's, I'm sorry bad writing on my hand yeah brian makes a phone call to the press secretary talking about gail's accusations against her family she's saying he's saying hey i'm going to hold an emergency uh 
an emergency um, court meeting now. She's like, hey, give me 24 hours. And he's like, fine, okay. Because she's like, oh, yeah, if you do that, you're going to ruin your entire career. No, I have pretty damning evidence. Uh, she signed the contract. We did a video chat. I got everything recorded. This is legit. And uh, she's like, well, you do know she has a tendency of making false allegations and lying, right? Well, regardless, this is the president's daughter, so this would make his career. Um, so he agrees to find 24 hours to the minute. And if not, you know, I'm going straight to court. So we go over to Donald and Kyle and, you know, uh, not. And again, I think that's why I'm actually semi liking Kyle more because we don't have as many creepy scenes between him and Donald. And no, it has nothing about being two men. But just the fact that Kyle is is basically Kyle is the Justin from the haves and have nots of the oval where it's like overly creepy and that just makes things super awkward instead of seeing actual character so yeah we got donald and kyle kind of briefly meeting up uh kind of touching base about the whole mattress situation and um you know kyle actually asked about the whole uh hey did lily uh go to lunch and everything with you oh wait that's right kyle was driving back to the white house from the boutique my bad i thought they were in the same office together but uh basically he's working on covering things up and they go from there uh, Gail gives the laptop back to Jason and he's like, Hey, you better be glad I have a tablet. So he wasn't too distracted from whatever it was he was doing beforehand. And she tells him about his emancip emancipation plan. And every time she says emancipation, yes, I know it's easy to think about Abe Lincoln, the slaves, Juneteenth and everything. But all I'm thinking about is Prince emancipation. That's all I can think about, you know, from the record uh, WB and the record label and whatnot. That's literally what I think about whenever I hear Gail say that, say that word. And I'm really wondering what her grandparents are going to do about this. But he's shocked and he's not willing to help her at all. And she tries to give a little blackmail. Hey, you like Jean, right? Well, I was in the back of her trunk, you know, that night when I snuck out, thanks to you. And I overheard her talking trash about, you know, our family. And she knows that if she says that kind of stuff and it's discovered she can get fired and based off where she lives, she definitely needs this job. So if I give you this information and whatnot, then you can use it to potentially get six. Basically, I think what Gail's saying is, hey, here's some blackmail on a girl I think I know you like. And if you use it, you can get her to do what you want. And even even freaking Jason is like, you are evil. So I'm like, OK, good on Jason and kind of like Kyle It's good to see him not being super creepy. I mean, I actually like the conversation between the two because I was waiting for Jason to say something like, why don't you lift your skirt or something? Basically something creepy as hell. But thankfully, he didn't do that. He literally just had a conversation with his sister. And I like that. That was a good moment. Um, and basically, he wants nothing to do with it. And she up and leaves. All right. So then we go over to Kyle, who's talking with Max. And basically, Kyle's trying to come up with this sob story about, hey, let's work together. Uh, nobody in our department has ever taken down a president. We can move up to the, like the head of FBI. Help me get rid of this mattress. Max doesn't trust him at all. And then he just leaves. So then we go over to Ellie and Hunter. I believe one of uh, the, uh, yeah, Hunter calls her into the office, basically saying, you'll make a good press secretary. And basically, Hunter's flirting. There's really no other way to say it. Uh, we go over to Donald and Diane, and she talks about the whole Gale situation, and she wants Donald, Hunter, and Victoria all in the Oval as soon as possible, and then Max gets the call to move the match. Like, hey, now's the moment to do it. So basically, Kyle's aware that the First Lady and basically the big, the powerhouses are in the Oval. Now's the best time to get the mattress the hell out of there. So then we go over to the Oval. Victoria sees Ellie and Hunter ask what the hell is he doing alone with her in the Oval, and then we go over to Donald and Diane coming in. They talk about, they brief them on the Gale situation. And in order to avoid the emergency situational hearing in 24 hours, they need to make sure everything is good to go in regards to the family looking like a great unit in order to debunk any kind of allegations that Gale made against her parents. Victoria is pretty much rude as hell to everyone. And I definitely see why people complain about that in other episodes because it's like you're being... You're being ridiculously venomous towards everyone for no good reason whatsoever. So she just ups and leaves. And I think Hunter tells Donald about wanting a new press secretary, which again, we know it. He wants Ellie in that position. So I guess that would 
allow for more one-on-one -on -one meetings and whatnot so it's pretty ridiculous okay so max gets a call from yuma to come down to the boutique and we know that's kyle making her make the call uh victoria sees the bedroom door is open she chews out the maid it turns out secret service ordered the room to be cleaned out so literally there was nothing the maid could have done about it uh again victoria being overly rude is like did i make a mistake it's like no your parents did wow all right so then we go over to ellie talking with uh diane and she pretty much says, raise your skirt because she is like, where were you at? I was with the president in the Oval. Doing what? Oh, he just asked me, you know, about school and everything. Stop smiling. Oh, okay. And then basically she accuses. But remember on Ruthless, if you watch Ruthless, when Daikon uh, noticed that Andrew was in the prison box with Vitaly for a bit too long and they're cutting grass outside of my window I did not expect it it's 351 I did not know they cut grass this late here at the apartment complex so I apologize for background noise uh and uh oh hang on I'll just wait usually they cut grass super early in the morning I don't know why they waited this long I apologize but in any case um remember when Andrew came out of the box and Daikon was like Lower your pants because, oh, yeah, I could smell on a man's genitals if he's had sex or not. I'm like, what the hell? Basically, Ellie didn't do it. And he's like, why is your lipstick, lipstick smudge? Like, it's not smudge. And apparently she had a pair of yellow panties and she's going to have it tested. And if they turned out to be hers and she's going to be in trouble. And what did she say? When the results come back, you're fired. But I'm like, so if it turns out those panties aren't Ellie's, then is she fired? Or if they are hers, then she's fired. This is weird. But then we go over to the last scene. Max goes over to the boutique and freak, freaking brawl goes out. This is awesome. This is a, a pretty good fight. Even Yuma gets in trying to choke Kyle, but he gets out of the hold. And yeah, I mean, this is a very good fight scene. I can't wait to see how it finishes off next week. But only one person's walking out of there alive. I mean, honestly, if it's Max that beats Kyle, then I think Yuma's probably still going to survive. But we know in the trailer that somebody's going to walk away from the vehicle that's blown up. So... We'll have to wait and see. I think it's Max who wins in the end, but I don't know for sure. So with that being said, I think this was a pretty solid episode. Uh, you know how it is with the season coming to a close. The episodes are going to get very good. Uh, what is the episodes? 22, 3, 4. Yeah, we got four episodes left. So basically the 29th is the finale. And that's all she wrote. So let me know your thoughts on this episode. Make sure you follow me on social media. Like I said before, links are in the description. And they're cutting grass again. Hang on a second because I'm almost done with the video. Okay, I'll let me rush through this. Shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. You can join in for as little as a dollar a month. Also, if you'd like to donate to the channel, make sure you do so on PayPal or Cash App. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And I'll talk to you all soon.